Yes, that is why you see that in Tema Port, about three quarters of the time is ball carriers that are here, not container vessels. Okay, containers do come in, but they are not as many compared to the ball carriers. But in the Far East, most of their trade is containers because they produce specialized goods, clothing, uh, electronics, cars, and everything. They are all in the Far East compared to what we do here. Here, when we are exporting, even cocoa, still in this day and age, we export cocoa beans, okay? Majority of the cocoa we export is in the form of beans, cocoa beans. We don't add any value to it. So we still have to use, rely on the general cargo and bulk ships to, to carry them. And then meanwhile, the things that we need, most of them are container goods like our handbags, our uh, laptops, projectors, everything, clothing, uh, all finished products that come through containers to, the, to us. So we have most of it in the Far East. Europe has 23% control of container trade. Then in North America, 16%. Near and Middle East, 6%. Central and South America for, and then Africa, only three percent. <coughs> ports. When we look at the ports, also the volume or the movement of trade, forty-five percent of it is liquid bulk. That is mainly oil. Forty-five percent of goods moved is oil. Okay, and then the petroleum products and chemicals. 23% is dry bulk, that is coal, iron ore, grain, phosphate, and all those that fall into that category. And then we have 32% of general cap, that is the finished products. So the two, the first two are raw materials, liquid bulk, mainly oil, most of the time is raw material, because the crude oil is usually more than they move the products, the petroleum products. When we are looking at ports, usually when, when you, you look at information about ports, for example, if you go onto the Gakuha website and you look at, they will be trying to, to portray how efficient or how good they are. And there's also, therefore, the tendency for, for the world to, to uh, look at ports in different ways, categorize them or try to compare them in different ways. Ports can be compared by way of volume or value of trade, by the number of vessels calling, by the revenues that they derive from ships calling, by the storage capacity, and also by the productivity or efficiency of the port. But usually, the total uh, cargo handled is what counts, and therefore the total TEUs, that is 20 equivalent units of containers that are handled in the port. So a ship, a port might say, or oh, last year we were able to handle so many uh, uh, volumes of cargo, so many volumes of uh, grains passed, or iron ore, or bauxite, aluminium, uh, 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 manganese passed through our, our port, or so many vessels passed through the ports. So they will be comparing in terms of the number of vessels that called at that port. So they have all these uh, uh, ways of measuring the, uh, the, the productivity of the port or comparing the productivity of the port. But sometimes they actually compare it in terms of the, the, ta the productivity and efficiency, especially, because every, every ship wants to stay minimum time in, in, in port. They don't want to spend too long in the port. As I told you, ports are very, very expensive. When you call at any port, even in the 70s and 80s, it was about $10,000 a day just to be there without the cargo handling charges coming in and anything else. Just using the bed facility was so expensive. Okay. So if any ship calls there and you are able to complete the cargo quickly for them to leave within a few uh, uh, number of days, then they are happy to be going away and so sometimes they might choose to come to that port to even deposit cargo 
That is when you can push for your, vet, your, your pot to become something like a hot pot. When it is a hot pot, it should be very, very efficient to be able to do the redistribution of the cargoes that come there. Okay. So the more efficient you are, the more uh, uh, volumes of cargo you would attract or numbers of ships coming you would attract. If you look at what happened um, during the Ivorian uh, crisis, when they were, they were fighting, you saw that most of the, the other countries, Niger, Mali, that is how come they set up their offices here and they seem to have stayed. They were importing their cargoes through here rather than to, through Abidjan. It wasn't that ships were not calling Abidjan, they were calling there, but it wasn't efficient. You can go there and if, for, for one reason, the, the fighting is so intense around the harbor, nobody will come to work. So that your ship will be put lying there and there's no uh, work going on. So it wouldn't benefit the ship owner to call there. He wants a place where he goes there, the ship is released within the shortest possible time and he goes away. As I told you, a ship only makes money when she's on the high seas, when she's earning the freight. The moment she comes alongside, she's spending money. And she doesn't want to spend that money. Every ship owner wants to make his money and keep it and invest it maybe buy more ships or do something else with his money, not to be paying I mean, unnecessary bills. Some of the major ports are also known to specialize in some trade. Some specialize in bulk trade, in the handling of dry bulk, container ship, uh, container uh, uh, traffic, or uh, oil, that is liquid uh, bulk, and so on. So you would know that when, when they are doing the tables, BIMCO does that a lot. BIMCO is an association of ship owners. Okay? So they, they try to uh, categorize the ships and, and also the ports, mainly the ports, according to their productivity levels and so on. So the trade volumes from and to a region will determine the potential for a seaport to become a top-ranking port. If you look at a, a port like Singapore also, where Singapore is situated, it is situated in the way going from the east to the west, okay, and back and forth. So it is at a, a vantage point, okay. If you take a port like um, uh, Cape Town, Cape Town too is at a vantage point. Until the opening of the Suez Canal, Cape Town was the only place you could pass east-west. And of course, when they also opened the Panama Canal, the Panama was before the Suez anyway, when they opened the Panama Canal. But the Panama Canal is not big, so it can't accept all the sizes of vessels. So you always have to come, if you are going east to the far east, some uh, uh, cheap owners prefer to come and pass the Cape of Good Hope. But before the Suez Canal was opened, all the ships from Europe, if they were going to the Far East, they had to come and pass Cape Town. So Cape Town was strategically positioned. So for a, vest, a, a port to become a hot port or a big port to develop, its strategic position is very, very important. Okay. Ghana wants to attract a lot of traffic here, but we are not strategic, strategically uh, positioned. Dakar is better, because where Dakar is, by all means, you pass it. But Ghana, you have to make a detour before you come this way, because of where the, the, the country is positioned. Okay. So where the, 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 the port is positioned is very, very important for her to develop into a big or top-ranking port. Okay. The, the trade patterns also come in. The types of cargo that are traded determines the specialization in the handling of the, 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 the port concern. Some would specialize in containers, general cargo or bulk cargo. Where Ghana can take advantage of the thing is to build the port in such a way that if you look at, I mean, we are, I'm considering only the West African area. If you look at the shape of the West African map around the West African area, if only we could calm down a bit on this, our uh, what is going on now, the, the piracy and so on. But even in Ghana, it's safe, much, much better than 
maybe in the other, especially getting to Nigerian uh, uh, areas, where a lot of ships these days do not want to call. So that if we had very good uh, link between Ghana and Nigeria via land, that is maybe we could develop uh, the trade through railway lines, then people would have preferred to come and dump their cargoes here and then we just go by a rail to we go by rail to the cargoes go by rail to Nigeria, to Niger, to Burkina Faso and all those places. Okay. Because we still haven't developed it so well. So they, they still even though some can come here, but depending on where the country, the inland countries are situated, they will prefer the, the cargo be taken to another port rather than maybe to Ghana. Okay. And of course, the, 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 if you look at all the landlord countries above Ghana, upper, uh, in the upper uh, part of the, the uh, African continent, they are also all French speaking. Maybe if they were, if Ghana was uh, bilingual or we spoke a, a very good French, they, they would rather to do business with us than do business with La Côte d'Ivoire. Okay. Because on the coastal, apart from da uh, Dakar and uh, Guinea, all the rest are English speaking. Okay. So they would prefer to do business with the French speaking than with the English. The French are like that anyway. That is how they live. <laughs> so, in, in 2005, when they did the ranking of ports, um, 2004, Singapore was reigning. 